Welcome to Salmon Run in a Nutshell. This is a series to give you some quick tips to help your workday go a little smoother. I'll keep it brief so you can get to splatting, so let's get to work. On Marooner's Bay, most of the fighting is going to be done on the ship for high and normal tide. This area of the map is a high and narrow portion that slopes down in the back of the ship. Two metal grates are next to the egg basket. When returning to the basket, this can be a nuisance, but it can also be utilized to escape in a pinch. However, be aware of what's lurking down below. This area can also be used for traversal to the other shore. It's most likely a faster way to get back to the basket from the pier side, but definitely riskier due to the blind corners on the other side of this path. If on the left side of the map near the piers, eggs can be thrown very close to the basket. This can be done on the other side as well, but it's probably easier to throw the eggs onto the propeller lift. On high tide, the map will be very narrow, so try to keep the enemies closest to the egg basket splatted. Otherwise, the static enemies will be hard to manage since they will be out of range without using the special. On low tide, there are three paths towards the water. The two on the left loop around, whereas the other path is a dead end. When recovering eggs, don't stay near the water for long. It can be easy to get surrounded and be unable to get back to safety. If golden eggs do need recovered, the Octobrush will be the safest bet since it won't need to paint its way back to the basket. The Splattershot is a mobile, versatile weapon with decent range and reliable damage. This is the game's iconic weapon for a reason. It can't be said that it's the average weapon of the game since it excels at most tasks and only lacks in range. It's a safe option for collecting eggs on the shore, but don't spend too much time regardless. Splat small fries whenever possible and splat any other lesser salmonids whenever you're crossing paths with them. Even Kohawks will go down in about one second of sustained firing. There isn't any boss that this weapon can't handle, but be careful when fighting steelheads. Without a height advantage, the camera will be tilted quite high, which will make it easy for other enemies to sneak up on you. The Octobrush attacks in a little bit of a cone in front of the user. One inkblot will always travel nearly directly in front of you per swing. The other four inkblots will come out somewhat randomly, but they will be split between the left and the right side of center. The Octobrush deals the most damage when making direct melee contact, but the damage difference isn't enough to risk taking damage from enemies that are attacking you. The melee range is useful for splatting bosses like stingers, scrappers that are already stopped, steel wheels that are chasing another crew member, slamming lids, or flipper floppers. Unless you have a height advantage, don't attempt to splat steel heads, but don't just ignore them. If you're being targeted, try to have the steel head aim the bomb away from other players or golden eggs to avoid it exploding behind them without them seeing it. The sloshing machine deals damage in a radius around the shot. It's almost as if it's a blaster shot exploding along the whole path of the shot. Direct hits will do more damage, but only do this for the boss salmonids. When fighting lesser salmonids, aim slightly to the left, right, or higher than the enemies so that it will hit multiple enemies. If a Kohawk is alone, it's fine to use direct hits to save a little ink. The shots fire out at a somewhat slow rate, so be sure that there are already areas painted around you so that you don't get stuck in a position where it's difficult to escape from a lethal situation. The heavy splatling can shred through hordes of enemies with ease and is excellent at painting large areas at a distance. It can only be charged and fired. The charge cannot be stored and it cannot be charged until the firing is complete or if canceled by going into squid form. The range is good, which makes it a safe weapon to splat steel heads, stingers, fish sticks, big shots, and steel eels from a distance. If you go to the shore to collect eggs, the most I would recommend is to throw one egg in the direction of the basket, grab another, and swim away. It can be easy to get surrounded with this weapon since it can't paint quickly. And that's all there is to say for today. Make sure you revive your teammates as soon as possible. I hope you all have a smooth day at work. Good luck and good fishing.